Hello everyone and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian if you're new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, you magnificent beast. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free compliments at the start of these videos. In today's guide, we're going to be doing a deep dive into Final Fantasy XIV and Walker's various different settings. Whether you play on a controller or keyboard and mouse, these are things that you don't want to ignore. So whether you're returning to the game after a long break or you're just getting started on your adventure, this is going to be hopefully very helpful and useful for you. Now, if you feel like you have any other questions, post this guide. Feel free to sound off in the comments below, and I'll be happy to either answer them down there or in a follow-up video if necessary. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First and foremost, one of the key things that I think a lot of people miss, and it's just because it's hidden. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to this material vendor and small talk. If you take your mouse, you can actually right click any of the text box and say scale output. So if you really want to increase your overall size of the box here, you can do so very easily. Now, let's say you're on a controller. Uh, you can actually hold down the left bumper and then press on the R3 stick and your mouse will actually now enter into a virtual mouse mode in which that moving the right stick will allow you to do that. And then using right trigger will actually act as the, the right click. In fact, from here, you can actually use the, the D-pad to select scale window and make that change accordingly and setting it back here as well. In this case, I like to have it at 160%, but you do you being able to press the L bumper and R3 again will take you out of virtual mouse mode and you can go ahead and finish your conversation. Now, jumping into our character configuration, we have a lot of settings to go through, a lot of tabs, and we'll also cover some HUD options for you guys here in this video as well. So you should be able to jump to that using the chapters in the, in the bottom of the YouTube playlist here to be able to kind of skip to any particular section that interests you the most. But overall, first and foremost, you can actually play this game both with the keyboard and mouse and controller. In fact, if I was still in uh, you know keyboard and mouse mode, I still can actually use my controller and it's going to function based off of its own settings as well. So I'm moving my controller right now. So you actually have a lot of flexibility in how you choose to play the game. Typically, I like to use the legacy type camera based movement, which you can see here when I move and run around. Let me just go ahead and move this out of the way. When I move and run around, I, you know, circling, I can move in a circle, switching that to standard type. If I press back, I'm going to walk backwards uh, and, and strafe left and right on a uh, joystick. But that is essentially your preference uh, to choose and use from. So a couple options here that I really want to point out is cutscene skipping. This is not necessarily to recommend skipping cutscenes, especially for the story in the game, but as part of it, like whether you're doing scenario, whether you're doing transportation, whether you're doing housing, whether uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. If you've already seen it, you've already seen that cutscene for that dungeon, you can have the game automatically skip it for you. So that way you don't have to keep hitting skip cutscene, especially when you're in a dungeon and a cutscene plays after finishing it. It's going to be completely up to you, but you do have these options here in general. Going further regarding whether you play inverse or not, I am an inverse player. I know, I know it's a strange thing for some of you but uh, you can control whether your X or Y axis is inverse based off of third person and first person camera. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you set up your, uh, your you know, basically how your Y axis uh, operates. In this case, even the X axis, but I don't, I don't know anybody who play, plays with X axis inverted. Um, you can also say first person camera auto adjust. What this means is that you're going to have the camera automatically kind of set itself back into kind of a standard view. So if you're struggling with kind of first person mode, you can have that set yourself right back to where you want. And you can also have camera effects initiated different actions. So you can have different controls of your character speed, your keyboard, your turn speed, and your third person camera angle. So you can see here, you can adjust your angle. This will be very good if you're playing like a, a potato, a Lala fell. Uh, in this game and you can't necessarily see uh, various different boss mechanics but you can adjust that and so in fact if I go ahead and switch back uh, you can see here even on keyboard and mouse my third person camera angle is different than what it is over on the control side of things so feel free to play with it whatever feels the best and most comfortable for you uh, in that regards so and then the, finally on the general tab you have camera event uh, settings look at target when speaking, this is essentially good for role playing. This is really good for, uh, you know, just however you want to do it. You can choose to turn that off if necessary. Under targeting is where we can start to get a lot of nuance in how the system is set up. 
first and foremost you can have automatically lock on target when initiating auto attack if i go ahead and turn that on and i just start kind of my auto attack you can see here my character I'll go and drag this out of the way is now locked on auto wise and thus essentially allowing me to kind of strafe and move around uh, the target it's up to you if you want to have that kind of approach you can always press down on the left stick to turn this off and on if you're on a controller to note that you have that flexibility in this regards you have the option to automatically face the target when using an action uh, so for certain spells and abilities you're going to obviously have to face the target you can turn this off if necessary you can say enable auto attack when no target is specified disable targeting of pets and minions when in battle this is especially important because overall you can't really target your pets and minions uh, in the first place especially <laughs> uh, if you're doing dungeon content but overall pets don't necessarily need to be targeted anymore uh, in Endwalker, you can also say switch to target circle to target select. So what does this mean? So switch target circle, target select. First and foremost, if I have it off, which I have by default, if I go ahead and use the left and right, or if I'm just targeting another target, you can see here it's this soft targeting circle that is being applied to what different options I have. So if I want to go ahead and shift my target, I have to actually press to confirm that, that target shift. If you want to have it more always be a hard targeting if i'm in here now i just press left and right and then it's just going to go and switch to whatever target automatically without having to have that soft target it's really going to be up to you in what is your personal preference target types regarding target closest enemies you could say ignore depth or you could focus in it on a cone targeting uh, and so if you're finding yourself struggling with targeting if you're like hey i really think that it would be better if I was going to target something that's maybe a little bit more closer rather than something that's further off, then, you know, you can see here it's going to go based off of a cone left to right, as opposed to essentially where it's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and ignore the depth of the target and it's going to just kind of focus in on picking whatever it feels like in the most part. So just kind of play around with what uh, you feel is ends up being best regarding ignoring depth or on the gut regarding the cone targeting. Pretty much I stick with ignore depth that hasn't ever really kind of impacted me in a negative way now to highlight some of the changes regarding ground targeting settings that were made with Endwalker, i brought out my astrologian here i'm gonna use earthly star as an example i'm gonna go ahead and close out this window and if i'm over here i can actually press the r you know r1 and then use the left stick to move now you can see here it's going to let me just be ridiculous and you see all this purple that's not going to let me place it outside that ring let me go ahead and show you guys this new setting that they've added limit ring movement to the targeted range if i hit apply on that now if i hold that r1 and then use left stick you can see here even though i am pushing my mouse cursor upwards it's going to limit it to the range in which that i can set the ability i've also got it set so that when i press a button it's going to go ahead and set down earthly star and with this ability you get a lot of range uh, <laughs> with it so hopefully that is a huge help because this setting itself is quite epic now if you wanted to turn off the ability to turn you know to use the uh, the skill by pressing the ability again, press action twice to execute. Uh, you can turn that off from this setting as well. Uh, under display settings, you can say highlight the potential targets. So if I turn that on, you can actually start to see that various targets are going to get a nice little yellow outline. If I actually draw in a little bit closer, it's going to be a little bit more prominent to highlight. So you can see listed right there as well. I'm going to turn that off. Personally speaking, uh, display target ring, display target lines and display play aggro lines when you this what this means is that as you're fighting you'll see that if anybody's kind of targeting you a little arrow will be animated and show you that option as well click filter settings enable selection of targets nearest to your mouse cursor you can have click filter targets for a non-party pcs alliance all enemies duty specific and minions as well as party members pets aggroing npc objects and signs you can even set these pre-built out options as well so you can kind of play around with ultimately what makes the most sense for you in that regards all right let's continue on our journey and jump into target filters this is one of my favorite things to do and talk about as a controller player for players because you have two different cycles of uh predefined and you have more custom settings by enabling like l1 and the various different uh, base buttons on the controller you can actually have six different filters one for when your weapon sheathed one for when your weapon is drawn and you actually have four that you can define and easily set by holding down l1 and then cycling through and you'll always be able to see what filter you're on 
right above your player health bar as well. But first and foremost, non-player PCs, Alliance, all enemies, aggro duty specific and NPC objects. You'll notice I turn off party members, minions, signs, and pets, etc. And same thing with enemies. The reason is, especially on a controller, I can press up and down to cycle through party members and then left and right to circle, uh, circle, <laughs> uh, cycle through various different targets. In fact, if I have my weapon out, which you can do on a controller by pressing down on the L, um, you know, stick button, then it's only going to left and right is only going to focus in on enemies in which right now there are no enemies, uh, clearly here out at this Aetherite Plaza. All right. Under character, you can turn off and on display headgear. You can also manually adjust your visor on specific select gear only. You can display main and, and uh, offhand gear when sheathed, meaning you can have it actually hide your weapon. So from a roleplay perspective, this gives you a lot of flexibility. You can say also auto sheath your weapon when not in battle and how long that delay is going to be, as well as randomizing your idle animation. And you can say various effects in motion for your idle animations and more. Now, battle effect settings. This is going to be really critical, especially as you get into larger group content i'm going to let you make that decision for yourself but you can say your own skills i recommend showing those but when it gets down to it if it gets too busy you can turn off to show none for party other p uh, uh other characters and more and you can also set pvp opponents in the same way now typically what i would recommend is own show limited on your party and others to show none so that way you can actually see what's going on but if you're like a tank and you're struggling because there's so much going on, you got two black mages in your party and uh, things get a little bit hectic, a little bit busy, you can always turn that to show none. Under your mouse settings, you have enable clicking on self if necessary, enable clicking on the field to remove target as well. Uh, you have mouse uh, wheel settings regarding scroll up for camera zoom in and out, and then scroll up and down with control alt and shift to various different assignments that you choose and you want to use. So you can kind of play around with your mouse settings. Now under your item settings, uh, like your inventory interface, you can see here open all and expanded and normal. Let me go ahead and show you what that is. Here in open all, if I go ahead and pull up my inventory, you can see here a big old inventory box. Now let me go ahead and go into my character configuration. Let me say expanded. And it's a different style inventory in this case two boxes but a couple different pages right and then finally normal in an inventory you can see here one page of inventory so depending on your settings and your preferences i like to say open all so i get a real clear picture of my inventory same thing applies for your retainer whether it's normal or expanded and another setting here store all newly obtained items in the armory chest so let's say you're running dungeons, especially old dungeons, and you're getting a lot of loot drops because you should be rolling on those loot drops. Note that it might be more beneficial to say, don't store those items in your armory chest, but rather have it drop into your inventory. And the reason why you'd want to do something like that is under actions and traits and under your like maybe desynthesis, uh, this is going to give you the ability to see everything that is currently in your inventory and you can just easily desynthesis this that makes like that's the worst english i could probably uh comprehend but let's say for example i want to look at my armory chest main and offhand i can't filter to things like in my uh you know in my like gear sets i don't know why i was struggling with that word so this is a real handy way of uh continuing to use and level up your deeths skill that's bad english as well and uh and that way you don't end up running the risk of uh, getting rid of something that you actually need to equip now obviously before you would do something like that you want to actually go look at the the uh different gear and see if anything is actually better for the character that you have at the moment and you can then do like an item compare uh on that and you can see exactly what you've got in this case i've got something a little bit better than what i've got over here and thus that's why i'm going to go ahead and descent and want to highlight that for you there so that's a setting hopefully that's going to help you guys out in the long run let's continue on our journey here uh sub cam man com customization so you can see here you can actually customize a various second tier of all your different sub commands uh listed right here from your first tier to your second tier uh and more i'm gonna let you guys kind of play around more with that if necessary if you feel like it sort customization standard reversed and none uh required level descending or ascending item level descending or ascending stack size descending or ascending 
meaning you know lar largest to smallest etc so you have a lot of functionality when it comes to your sort function uh, especially when it comes to your inventory sort method fill tabs in order sort items into sections based on their different category that's going to be up to you so if you want to have uh, items kind of fall into specific bags as a part of that this is going to be the option for you shop settings display confirm prompt when selling items that are meldable and spirit bond i turned off unique untradeable items but you can have and control those different extra prompts that you end up getting moving to our ui settings under general mouse mode type game mode type so if i say mouse mode type down here in the bottom which you can't actually see let me see if i can actually pull up that via the hud hud layout main menu i'll just drag it right here it actually turns my menu instead of when i press start it actually is just going to move me down here to these options so then from here i'd have to actually go back into character configuration and turn this to game mode type in which that when i would hit start it would bring up this menu for me to control that's where that is set for you map settings short cut display type close when active or close immediately restore map when not moving set to no so for example let's say if i set that to yes apply i pull up my map and then i'm moving and then if i stop moving my map becomes the main focus window if i say no go back into character configuration say no and pull up my map start moving it's no longer active it stays up but no longer the main active window i have to press my map button again to make that the active window so that's going to be something that you can kind of play around with and what kind of feels the best map font size large or standard or your settings various map transparencies when it is currently not the active so you can really kind of reduce its transparency if need you can also reverse stick up and down control and left and right control for the map specifically for help you can say display item help and toggle between normal and high quality text your toggle key is going to be in this case the l2 the trigger on game pads or it's control alt and or shift enable help text toggling control alt or shift display action help and you can say fixed and reversed so you can say how that is kind of functional and displays display uh pop-up help either standard large or maximum display active windows and also display help text when using cross type main commands you can have it now also choose to show recommendations of what you can do in the game when you log in or upon area change same thing for your play guide turning that on or off oh upon login or area change and achievements display achievements nearing completion as a login notification i'll leave that up to you on what you choose to play around with regarding your hud you can display flying text you can even set that to various uh, different sizes maximum larger standard display pop-up text maximum larger standard display parameter bars display exp bar display inventory grid which is right off off the corner of my screen but it you can turn that off as well display duty list which is currently off off the the, the screen here that's being captured display number of duties and you can pick however many you want to see maximum there you can say also hide duty list during instance hide during non-instance display register duties as in timers display duty registration details in your timer screen you can display your mini map which i actually play this game without a mini map and we all talk about that in a future video you can say display gill if you desire display server info your clock time which you can see up here on the upper right hand side of my screen you can turn on server local or aorzia local being your time zone the game time zone as well then you can also display your limit gauge main scenario guide hide when all quests have been completed for the main scenario guide and display character uh, portraits when battle dialogue widget this is a new feature within endwalker that you can play around with for your targets target information display only detrimental effects that you afflict so that way if you end up being in a group and just tons of things are on the boss and you can't even see it you only want to see the ones that you have on for your focus that's going to be a setting for you display enemy list and your progress bar focus target information and overhead name display and target information uh, remaining hp percentage so as a target has their life lowered uh you can see that as a hp display and what all these things are going to do is just various different widgets that you can play around with i personally recommend using the settings that i've got laid out as a good start so if you have some of these turned off maybe turn them off uh turn them on excuse me play around with them and go from there for your party list if you want to display full name abbreviated uh, sir or four names or just the initials you can control that as a part of your party list you can say also hide party list when solo and status effect icons maximum displayed 
in this case it the minimum is in this case uh the, the lowest you can set it to is five and you can actually go up to 10 for their maximum effect icons display you can say i want to display lines one and two and regarding parting the sorting especially if you're playing a healer and controller being able to have your sort order um and you know put together it ends up being a huge help so tank healer dps and you can set this based off of your role that you're currently in and however you want to kind of structure it uh listed there and then you can say role sorting settings and you can have a little bit more uh control over that uh as well so you have a lot of control when it comes to parties and targets and more within this game continuing on our journey into our display name settings display name presets i've got mine set to custom but you have a couple of builds hide minimize show default and show all so in this case when displaying my own name i can display it when i am targeting myself so if i press up and down you can see hey here's my name my title my free company uh display type whether it's my full name i can also change that as well my title display settings whether to show or hide and then my hp display settings when my hp is below 100 percent and you could say always during battle never or in that case below 100 percent same thing applies to companions and same thing applies to pets under others you'll actually have it with party alliance other npcs and friends in fact the color by you, you see these names will actually dictate how they show up in the game itself what color they're highlighted as so if you run into the fact that like maybe the party members aren't showing up visually as you would hope that they would uh, I would recommend changing the color so that it's something more akin to that you can pick up and see visually under your NPC same thing unengaged enemies engaged enemies if you wanted to have engaged enemies highlight a little bit harder with their harder red you can do so just by clicking on that button and changing it same thing applies for their display name and their HP bar settings so you have a lot of again a lot of power like I love this game for everything that it gives you that that functionality and then and it comes into general presets for your pvp frontline abbreviation settings if needed and feast display name settings all listed here and this is actually going to be changed with the patch 6.1 as the feast will be going away and we'll see a new pvp mode uh taking its place all right now we continue our venture into the hotbar settings for display in this case display recast timers highly recommend turning that on high unassigned slots if i turn that off you can see here all of a sudden i got these little floating hot bars out here i like doing this so that they kind of has a nice clean approach doesn't mean that you can't you know still drag and drop different abilities to wherever they need to go uh and even off of your bar in this case for things that <laughs> no longer apply to the game itself but just note that that is something you have the option for uh, you can say display hotbar numbers. I can turn that off so that way I don't have these random floating numbers uh, because I have on the side slots, uh, you know, hidden in this case. Enable hotbar cycling button. Uh, this is essentially as part of hotbar one. You can move that up and down. Uh, include pet hotbar when cycling. Enable drag and drop repositioning uh, if desired. Now for your hotbars themselves, you can actually set up the various different uh, layouts. So you see here, I've got hotbar two and I can go ahead and change its total shape and control. And you can do some of this more from the various different huds i'm gonna hit close let's see if it actually returns back to its no, it did not <laughs> perfect option to jump into the hud and move this downward uh back into its original position that i had it but anyway you have that ability even within the hud section you can actually hit ui se se uh, segments or uh settings and you can even adjust it listed here as well it might be a little bit easier if you're in the hud settings so that way if you end up doing what i just did and moving it like crazy you can actually uh can have a little bit more control there you can also turn it on and off by pressing on the little checkbox listed there regarding sharing hop bar and cross hop bar this is going to be great especially if you play multiple jobs anything that is shared means no matter if it's your crafters or gatherers or your battle they're all going to have those same abilities in the same spot this is great for your mounts this is great for like materia extraction this is great for your wondrous tales which is right off the screen but if i do materia extraction I can see that listed here and thus i'm able to easily go ahead and continue to pull materia out of my um my gear which is very helpful in that regard so just note that regarding your sharing uh there's certain things that you don't need to set every time and you shouldn't have to but if it's not shared that means it's job and or class specific so if you change uh your job to something else like if i go gunbreaker uh that's going to be specific to how gunbreaker is set up as opposed to like something that is shared like you can see up here in the tipper tipper that's a perfect perfect word for the situation for your cross if you are using a controller cross hop bar 
uh, is enabled in this case always display you can actually have it turned off if necessary and thus when you kind of go into battle it will pop in and out uh, display hotbar help if necessary you can turn that on if i hit apply you'll that's where you'll see the different abilities being displayed but i like to have mine off a little bit cleaner i uh, use pet hotbar use pep hotbar uh, for mounting actions as well enable duty action input and display the control guide all settings in which that you it's really kind of like that's going to be personal preference of what you want to choose to use pet heart bar obviously if you're using a class a class with pets but ultimately uh, i don't think it's not important especially anymore but still there's some use in in it in that regards uh especially for mounts when you go in and you have a mount with a special ability we'll use the pet hot bar there uh hold toggle and mix hold is essentially where you hold down the ability toggle is where you can press the ability it's going to press the like trigger it's going to keep it locked and mixed is a little bit of both you can press and have that or you can hold and have it um, but i recommend using hold if you're struggling you can use toggle and mix to kind of get a little bit more cleaner uh you know i guess adjustment overall to how it's all set up but yeah anyway just kind of play around with what is the best hold gives you the most options out of your controller settings um uh, toggle and mix can kind of help especially if it's if you find it difficult uh and you know kind of fatiguing to hold down uh right trigger or left trigger for that long of a period of time uh, the cross hotbar type display type d-pad action buttons uh, in this case you can actually reverse that if necessarily d-pad d-pad and action action button uh w cross hotbar that's the uh the, basically the double cross hopper is what it's named but they call it whxp in game that's where you double tap on the left or right trigger and if you're struggling with that you can adjust your input timer here you can also p uh, position your bars separately if desired you can also in my case i have mine returned to my input after using the inability so you can see our usability and boom now i'm automatically right back in there and i say always to display that but i can always just kind of pop that up if necessary personally i like showing them so it's really going to be up to you on what you like under custom expand hold controls uh, in this case display with left trigger and right trigger this is the expanded cross hop bar not to be confused with double so you can actually set which hop bars they pull from same thing for the uh, cross hop bar on the double this is actually going to say hop bar three and left. In fact, if you try to interact and move and, and drag and drop things here, you won't be able to. You have to use and interact with whatever hop bar it's linked to. In this case, you can actually then move the ability around and you'll see it actually reflected in the double cross hop bar. It's a little bit uh, strange and confusing, but that's unfortunately how they do it. If you're wondering, you know how I switch between the cross hop bars so easily, you can hold down R1 and then in this case, just jump between the different abilities listed here. Under set selection, enable auto hotbar switching when drawing and sheathing your weapons, if desired. You can enable customization for when your weapon is sheathed versus when your weapon is drawn, just like with targeting. So let's say if my weapon is out and I don't want to get off a of hotbar one, I have to hold it to change it if necessary. But this kind of keeps me in my whole setup. But if my weapon is put away, maybe I want to cycle here to my repair gear option or different other uh, options that I have set on my current hot bars as well you can do the same thing uh that you that i just went over for pvp so you can actually have different whole settings for pvp but if you really want to test this you need to go out to the wolves pier and have that settings for you let's go into our log settings this should be kind of the last system settings then we'll jump into some hot options for you guys uh so you can display your name type in this case full or abbreviated as a part of your chat log which is currently off my screen you can display your world name in the log when your player's on another server. Enable le uh, lip syncing during chat. Enable profanity filter. Display error messages when actions fail. You can go ahead and say apply on that one. Display recast timer error messages. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Display al uh, altitude error messages. Get out of here. Uh, enable log window item linking and enable resizing of log window. You can say your time format and whether it's a 24 hour or 12 hour format. Up to you in that desire. And also your log text colors for the different types of chat that is going on in your log as well. Then regarding log filters, you can actually, regarding your different tabs, you can set up specific log filters as well. In fact, if you want, you can even just drag and drop and say, hey, here's my little primal FC chat. Actually, I should probably drag it in here. So you can separate your tabs and have multiple views on screen. And it's really gonna be up to you on what you decide to do with that. So in that case, the tab that I just showed you was actually just connected directly to my free company. So that way I never miss a free company message. Under log detail, you can have timestamps. You can play with around with this transparency, whether you want to have kind of a like a really dark background or more. And this applies to all the different tabs that you have available, as well as the different font sizes that is going to be displayed on those tabs. And you can even control different notification settings. You can see here listening to the different options here. 
Uh, so that way, if you wanted to sit here and have different sound effects for the different types of notifications you're getting from chat, then that way you're sure never to miss a particular message if, you, uh, if you're so inclined. All right, so we're going to jump now into our HUD layout settings. This is going to be great because as a part of the hop bar, like if you're looking for a specific element, especially if you're on a controller, this is really great for you to kind of find it. Now on a controller, I can press down on the right stick to resize uh, easily various options there, or you can easily just kind of control the various size listed here under the settings of that. And you can also control its transparency settings as well. So you have a lot of function. I'm going to go ahead and close out so it doesn't necessarily save that random change that I just made. But the other cool thing about your HUD layout here, you actually have four different layouts that you can kind of have applied. So as you play, if you wanted to have a specific HUD layout for maybe a role, so you could have tank, healer, DPS, and then other, you can have four different layout settings that will give you a lot of flexibility control of how you've got it uh, set up. Now, you'll also see basic options, adjust system HUD layout. So you'll highlight any options that are just a part of the system HUD itself. Same thing for the hot bars. You can see the listed hot bars. And then finally, duty specific gauges and actions. So this is going to be a nice little filter regarding just the basic HUD, various system options, hot bar settings, and duty. So that way you can kind of filter and get to the options that you want the most. The best thing to do, because I, I could go through here uh, and show you power sizes, you know, sorry, the, the sizes, transparency all day. But one of the things you should also pay attention to is switch gauge the simple and complex mode. So this is regarding your job. If you want to have a little bit of, I guess, a cleaner setup, you can keep your different gauges into simple mode. But another thing that I would like to highlight for you guys is under your various like enfeeblements and status effects. Some of these settings get really complex. You can say, I want to display as a single element. And if I do so, you'll see status effects, debuffs, and all that as a part of one. Or I can have it split into three groups or even four groups. Uh, it really just depends up to you. And then you can control the settings of those groups independently. And this is also even with wherever it's laid out. So you can see your status enfeeblements right here. But then I can say, here's my enhancements there. And my food buffs are over here. So you have a lot of flexibility with your different options. So I'd highly encourage you to go around and play and see uh, what specifically works well for you. Same thing kind of applies where you'll see here, I've got my mini map hidden. So if I ever need to turn it on, I can come in here and say display element. All of a sudden I got my mini map back, but I've actually been enjoying playing without my mini map. So hopefully you guys look forward to a future video here on the channel where I talk about it um, because I played the entire Endwalker expansion without a mini map and it was amazing. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me and this uh, huge HUD and system settings video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, uh, hitting that like button is a great way to say thanks. Another great way to say thanks is jumping in the comments and uh, saying hi. I always like hearing from you guys. And if there's anything I can help answer or get you more detail on, please sound off below and I'll do my best to get that to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, listening, and just being here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your Final Fantasy experience. And if there's anything I can do to make it better, just let me know. Anyway, for Ginger Prime, my name's Brian. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being awesome. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care. I just want to say I'm really glad you're feeling better. And I love the videos. Well, I love you too. Michelle. Shoot for the moon, and so even if you fail, you'll reach the stars. Go for the 100k subscribers. Yeah.